Uh, let's talk about the first game a little bit. Um, you know, it was a disappointing game. We had a one-run lead going into the eighth, and you know, just disappointed we didn't finish it up. We left a few runners out there. I think we had runners in scoring position um, four or five times with uh, with two outs mostly, but we just needed a big two-out hit. We never got it. Um, but uh, you know, I thought we pitched well. You know, we played good enough in the field to win. We just didn't do it, which was disappointing, especially when you're playing a team, you know, as talented as South Carolina is. Um, but I thought our team showed a lot of uh, character and toughness and any other cliches you want to throw out there, hanging in there and winning that second game. You know, it was just a big disappointment in the first game and coming back and, and scoring a run there in the first. We got a, finally got our two-out hit. Brian went down and got a change up about ankle high and slapped it to left. We had a one nothing lead and then uh, you know, I guess uh, you know, we got another big two out double uh, by Tyler Spoon that uh, you know gave us a three to nothing lead and then we tried to give it back to him with some some really shaky defense. Both teams did not play very good defense obviously the second game. I think guys were tired. It's tough playing double headers. Um, it's just the way it is. But uh, Yes, yeah, no excuse. But uh, you know, the the man of the hour was Jalen Beeks. He did a tremendous job. And I I tell you what, that inning where we gave him five outs didn't phase him. You didn't see him out there kicking around or pouting. He just kept kicking and fire. He just kept fighting and fighting, and he just kept getting on the mound. Didn't let it bother him. And uh, I mean, that that's a guy. You know, you got to give him a lot of credit, man. That was that was an awesome outing. And that was the inning he could have folded and said, man, what do I got to do? And he didn't say one word. He just went out there and got it done. And he got him out five different times. And uh, he only gave up one run. So hats off to the team and, and to Jalen Beeks. Do you sense any frustration with Trey, just the lack of run support he gets? No, I don't think he's – yeah, he's frustrated. I mean, I guess to answer your question, obviously it's human nature. He's going to be frustrated. But he doesn't say anything. Um, you know, we got him a lead one to nothing. Um you know, he gets the first out in the eighth, and then he throws first pitch fastball, and the left-hander drills a double, and then they get a C and I double. You know, a guy hits her. I got him playing on the line too, but now I guess not enough. And uh, and the ball got down the line, and you know, you you saw what happened from there. So, but you know, he pitched great. He, you know, hindsight's always twenty twenty. You take him out after seven. His pitch count was okay, but uh, you know. Uh, yeah, we need to score more runs for him. I feel bad for him. He's facing a big-time pitcher, and we we just need to get some hits. You know, we could have punched in a run here or there, could have had a three-run lead, and we didn't. I guess that was the second time you had Spoon lead off this year. What would you think of the spark he gave you right away? Well, obviously, he hits the first pitch, singles the right field, and uh, kind of fired up the team a little bit. I was just trying to shake it up, man. I mean, struggling, trying to score runs, frustrated a little bit. I just told him before the game, I'd, you know, I just called him up and said, hey, I, I, Change up lineup, not a big deal. Doesn't matter where you're hitting, just go up there and take it one pitch at a time and let's find a way to get a win. And you know, I don't think anybody was uptight. They just they just went out there and played and obviously I didn't care who it was the second game. I just wanted to keep trying to build a lead. I felt good about punching in some runs. I just kept sack button. I mean sack button with Brian Anderson. I got people in the stands yelling at me. But you know what? I wasn't going to change it in the bottom of the eighth. And if I hit and run, I'm going to line into a double play. Or if I let him hit it, we're going to hit into a double play. I said, hey, let's just keep doing what we're doing this game. And and it worked. You know, it worked for once. So we got to win. I guess Beeks has got, hadn't given up an earned run in like at least the last 17 innings because I didn't, didn't give up a run yeah. last week. Just talk yeah. about. He's pitched yeah. really, really well. He just competes and he uses both sides of the plate. He's got a plus change up and uh, had a breaking ball working today. I mean, he had three pitches that he could go to any time. And uh, struck out nine. He walked one, the last hitter, before we got the final out. It was an awful close pitch to not call strike three. And, uh, you know, he just did a great job for us. You got a couple big hits from Baxendale. Do you feel like you're at the point where you need him either? As a well, I like, him, I like him against left-handed pitching. He stays on the ball pretty good. Um, you know, even the ball that he that he pulled into left center was away, and and he stayed on just long enough and got it into the gap. And you know, he uh, he he moved a runner with a sack fly that he drove. Or not wasn't a sack fly, but he advanced a runner as a positive at bat. You know, I, I like him against left-handed pitching. You know, obviously at first base he's he's not as good as Fisher, and and Fisher's an experienced player over there. But 
I think he's going to get in there a little bit, DHing and uh, and playing some first, and you know who knows, maybe catching a little bit. Guys got they had 13 strikeouts that first game. Just how tough were those pitchers? Those oh, they're they're awfully good. You know, I mean, you're talking. You know, I guess the right hander came in and struck out five. You know, I don't know he struck out his first two, and maybe 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 the next three. I'm not sure. Maybe two, but uh, you know, and then you know left-hander I mean he's just he's crafty because he throws his change up away gets you out there get you and he busts you in and uh, you know he can get it up there 90 miles an hour so it's tough when you got a plus change up and you got that kind of you can locate your fastball like he does and he can also throw it that hard I mean that's that's why he's so tough to beat and that's why he pitches the first game every weekend for him because he usually gets him late in the game and saves that bullpen Gun good to go tomorrow. Really. Yeah, he was good to go that second game, but he, yeah, he'll be good to go. I think I think we have everybody available, and I would say they're the same way. Beeks had like 102 pitches going into the ninth. Did you give any thought to pulling them? Yeah, you know, if he hadn't had such a quick eighth, we were going to go to the pen. But I think he only threw like seven, eight, nine, seven, eight pitches in the in the eighth, and both Dave and I looked at each other and I said, "Let him go." You know, we had those guys playing catch. He got a he got an out and pretty quick out there, and then. You know, then he got got ahead of the next guy, and then he got him out, and then he went three straight balls, and then he threw two really nice pitches. And you know, I don't know if we'd have let him go, maybe another hitter or two, but uh, I'm glad we didn't have to deal with that. How do you balance being aggressive and, and trying to work things at the plate? Well, you just really try to read what the p other team's pitchers are, man. If they're throwing nothing but strikes, man, you got to swing. And the book on these guys, especially the second game, is you better get after him early in in the count because. You know, he's going to be around the zone. He had thrown 41, 42 innings, had five walks. That's pretty good. So, you know, you just have to, you know, look into the stats a little bit and figure it out and and then watch how the game's going, the flow of the game, man. If they're, gosh, if they're throwing it over the plate, you might as well, instead of being down 0-1, it'd be better out lining out first pitch and just, you know, you just do what you got to do. Yeah, you said, I guess you said the other day you guys really need to win this series and now you guys have got a chance tomorrow. <laughs> yeah, I said something big, like that. Yeah. Uh, oh yeah, yeah. I did say something like that, but uh, I probably say that every series. Um, but now this is a huge series for us, you know, and we still have a chance to win it. And uh, I mean, we got to start winning series. It's a fact. Our players know it, and uh, you know, this is our this is our home, you know, home stadium. We need to win. You know, South Carolina. They haven't lost series all year, so it'd be nice if we get them tomorrow. Have to beat a, beat a pitcher that hadn't lost all year either.